guys, Melissa here, and I want to touch base on a question that gets asked a lot, and I see it over and over again. It never seems to get old, and that question is, how many dogs a day should somebody be able to do on a professional level in a grooming salon? And, you know, there's a lot of different right and wrong answers, um, but bottom line, if you're looking to be a productive member of a team or you are looking at professional grooming to be a career opportunity and you're going to rely on the revenue that you're going to generate to pay your bills to enjoy life then pretty much the minimum that somebody needs to be able to do is between six and eight dogs a day and when I say six or eight dogs a day I'm not talking about you know the big giant furries the big doodles that are going to take two two and a half hours to do I'm talking more about the low maintenance small to medium sized dogs you know kind of no nonsense kind of haircuts and with that type of a trim um, that type of a job, you should be looking at being able to turn a dog a minimum an hour. So anywhere between 45 minutes and 60 minutes to do a low maintenance, you know, smaller type uh, haircut. And when I say that, I'm, I'm talking about the bath, the dry, and the haircut itself. So that is the whole enchilada, you know, if to be able to do under an hour. So if you're not hitting that mark, you might want to really, you know, look at what your skill set is and look at ways that you can start shaving off some time. But bottom line, as an employer looking to hire somebody, that's what I'm going to expect. And if somebody is fresh out of grooming school, you know what, they're not going to have the confidence to be able to do that, that those numbers right out of the gate. But that's definitely a target that they should shoot for, whether it be straight out of grooming school or they're just learning in an apprenticeship program or they're teaching themselves. You know, don't beat yourself up. First, you've got to master the core skills before you can speed them up. So, um, you know, give yourself a little bit of grace but work hard and focus on those core skills. And that is, how do you bathe effectively? How do you blow dry effectively? How do you get a dog brushed out, combed out so that it's totally mat free? How do you clipper efficiently? What type of tools and, and um, skills do you need to master to be able to be efficient with what you're doing? You know, I have a saying that I want to see a dog be absolutely super smooth in three passes of the clipper or less. And so, you know, if you're having to go over and over and over and you're not getting a smooth finish, then you need to look at your technique when you're dealing with clipper work. You know, if you're not being able to brush a dog out efficiently, and you know, when I say efficiently, there's no hardcore rule of how long does it take to brush a dog out, especially if it's got mats, mats and tangles in it, because every dog is different. Every dog has got a different tolerance level of what they will accept in the bathing or in the brushing um, uh, department. And how tight are those mats and tangles? And so you've got to take a number of things into consideration, but there's still shortcuts that you can do. And if you're not letting the products like the shampoo do a lot of the work for you or your high velocity dryer to loosen those mats up, to blow those mats and dead coat out of a dog, there's a time saving area that you can really focus on. So even though a dog might be super, super matted, it still shouldn't take that long to get it brushed out. Even if you're doing a salvage type job where you still have got to trim the dog down, but you're trying to keep maybe an inch of coat, there's tricks and techniques like cutting some of that coat off so you're not having to bathe all of it. Um, or blow all of it out or to demat all of it. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to help really speed up the process. But, you know, when you start looking at enhancing your speed, you don't want to sacrifice quality. And so you've always got to keep compassion for the pet 
absolutely at the forefront of everything that you're doing and to keep the quality so that that client is going to come back and have you work with them again, you know, because the whole key with professional grooming is to building that repeat clientele base. And so you can work on your speed. You can work on um, maintaining quality so that those clients come back and building up a strong client base so that you have a solid foundation to work from. But, you know, when I'm looking at people that are really, really productive, shoot, we just had a record day at one of um, uh, my companies, The I want to say just before Thanksgiving, and one of the stylists, and she's a certified master groomer, and she's been doing this for a lot of years, but she did 16 or 17 dogs by herself. Um, now, I will say she had an assistant, so she had a bather, and somebody was helping her get those dogs prepped, but still, to be able to do those types of numbers, you have to be so focused on what you're doing. You are not looking away from your table. You are not talking to your fellow groomer. You're not checking your phones. You are absolutely on task, on focus. That dog on your table is what you're looking at. And you know, if you really stay focused, you're going to be able to build up your speed. And again, you're not looking to do it overnight. This is a small incremental, stay focused, stay on task. If right now you're struggling to get through four dogs, your target should be to get to five dogs. If you're being able to do five, then look to move to six. So just take it one dog at a time, one day at a time, but stay focused and help to, and to master those skills so that you too are going to be able to comfortably do six or eight or more dogs a day every single day that you are grooming and you are at your grooming table. That's going to be make you be a really valuable team member if you're working in a salon situation or if you are a solo flyer. It's going to help build your business and make sure that you're going to have the revenues at the end of the week or the end of the month to pay your bills. And that's what the professional pet grooming is all about, being able to love what you do and make a living at it.